And here we go. It's Drop the Mic on a Friday. Mike Eccleston here live once again on the Legends Podcast Network on Lenny Melnick, FancySports.com. A network that's growing more and more each day, and I'm lucky enough to be part of. Thank you to all who are listening and all those in the chat room. Sorry I'm a little bit late. It took me like 10 minutes to get around the corner just because of, well, highway traffic and, you know, red lights on the highway. Come on in, take your shoes off, grab a drink, relax. I got a show for you today. I have a lot on my plate, so uh, let's have at it. Happy Friday, y'all. Happy Memorial Day weekend to each and every one of you. It's funny. On Monday, I was going to just rant about how awful and lifeless the Mets were during that 1-5 in five stretch in Washington and Miami. Being swept miserably by Miami. You're going to hear me say this a lot. Because it's it, it's always, it always rings true. And it will always ring true. You know why I love sports? You really have no clue what's going to happen in any given year. Any given day. Any given game. It is always fascinating. No matter what it is, uh, during a game, there's something that happened, the way a game finished, a surprise team that kind of comes out of nowhere. You, I mean, it's always keeping you on your toes as an observer. Well, I mean, except for the Western Conference and the NBA. Then the Warriors win the title on a yearly basis. The Eastern Conference Finals are fun. This year being no different. I mean, I'll get to that a little later on. The St. Louis Blues, led by netminder Jordan Binnington, outplayed the heavily favored San Jose Sharks, or at least I thought they were heavily favored. I I went into that series fully expecting to see a Boston Bruins versus San Jose Sharks Stanley Cup Finals. So seeing the Blues there, they're red hot. I'm kind of surprised to see them, but that's what sports is. You know what? Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's what we expected and sometimes it's the complete opposite. You know, they they handled the Sharks in 6 games. They're going to the Stanley Cup Finals. There are some things that transpire that just make you shake your head in utter disbelief. So I was watching MLB Network the other day. And they were ranking their Cy Young candidates. Their AL Cy Young candidates. The top six for the American League Cy Young Award, according to them, thus far this season. Now, you look at these names, and you think, man, were, were, were they on drugs? Like, there's just no way that any of these guys outside of one would ever be brought up. Not, not only in that conversation, on the same island as that conversation was taking place. A guy like Ryan Presley of the Houston Astros... Arguably the best reliever in the major leagues right now. As of yesterday, zero earned runs, nine hits, a whip of 0.43, two saves, 22 strikeouts, and zero walks through 21 innings of work this season. That's absolutely remarkable in itself. Zero walks and only nine hits in 21 innings. It hasn't given up a run or a walk in two months. I mean, that's something special. I'm going to talk about the team he's on a little later on in the show. We'll get to that. 
And then there's Mike Miner. No, but seriously. When you Google his name, he might not even be the first Mike Miner that pops up. Miner has spent most of his career in like the early fours when it's come to ERA. Like he's been a solid pitcher throughout his career, but he's been excellent this year. A 5 and 3 record with a 2.64 ERA. Around a strikeout per inning. Has a complete game shutout this season and has only given up 53 hits. In his 64 and two-third innings of work this year. Then there's Martin Perez. (laughs) Martin Perez. Just like everyone drew it up. Nobody in their right mind would have thought this was possible. For him to be on a list of Cy Young candidates early on in a season. A guy whose ERA was over 6 a year ago. 6.22 to be exact. And it was almost at a 5. I think it was at 4.80 the year before. This is a 28-year-old journeyman at this point. He and Jake Odorizzi were both on this list. And there are some times when I'm watching Jake Odorizzi pitch and I'm thinking, he looks really hittable. He looks like I can hit him. But then he somehow ends up throwing six or seven shutout innings. Understandably so for the job that they've done this season. I get that Jose Barrios is the best pitcher on the Twins. But these two have somehow been better. A big reason why Minnesota has done as well as they have. I'll get to them a little bit later on too. They just continue to roll. Absolutely crazy what the Twins are doing. And then, of course, Domingo Herman, Who I've brought up before. And basically saved the New York Yankees season from a starting pitching perspective. I mean, but seriously though, did anyone expect this? He's leading the league in wins. Severino, hurt. Paxton, hurt. Hap has been awful. Sabathia has been in and out with, you know, injuries and old age. This is his last season. He's had a, Herman has had a great ERA. And he's been the Yankees' most consistent pitcher. Justin Verlander is at the top of this list. He's the only one that isn't surprising. Obviously, the only thing I the only thing I'll say about Justin Verlander is that the guy while, while seeing him go from Detroit to Houston, you can see the difference from being on a team that is com- was completely lost rebuilding and him going over to a team that's like a contender and to see the difference. This is a generational pitcher. People thought, you know, he was getting older. He was, you know, he was losing it a little bit. But to see the difference in his attitude, the way he's throwing, the energy he's bringing, big difference. He's been probably the most consistent pitcher in the American League for the last few years, ever since the trade. Verlander is the only one on that list that isn't surprising. But after that, it's shock after shock. That's the kind of season it's been so far. Hmm. It's amazing how a few days can change everything with a ball club. I mean, speaking of New York, I was just talking about the Yankees. But the Metropolitans 
just came off a road trip where they had lost two of three to the struggling Nationals and then got swept by a Marlins team that I'm still not convinced. is. I'm still convinced that they're not a major league team. This is a triple-A team. And even worse, they couldn't get a hit off of them. Remember the day before, uh, Pablo Lopez and uh, the Marlins combined to throw a one-hitter? And then the very next day, Sandy Alcantara threw an 89-pitch complete shutout to finish it off. Everyone, I'm speaking for Mets fans, including myself, wanted Mickey Calloway gone. The manager wanted him gone. The team looked lifeless. They didn't seem like they cared. Mickey Calloway was saying things like, I'm going to continue to lead this team to something special, and I don't believe in in must-wins until Game 7 of the World Series. That's not usually something you hear from Major League managers. There is such a thing as a must-win. Every game should be a must-win for you. Especially when you were a rookie last year, and there were a lot of questions about your man uh, about you know your managing style and whether or not you can be a leader of men S- to me something needed to change Yoannis Cespedes fractured his ankle on his ranch officially ending his year that was the ice that was like the icing on top there was some there's something about the whole the sky is falling thing when it comes to the Mets. Because it all seems like it happens at once. All the worst things can possibly happen happen at that point in time. It looked like it was going to be a long year. That was just the view from, you know, what it looked like on the on the baseball field. Fast forward to today. A four-game sweep of those same Nationals in New York. Late-inning heroics in three of those games. A ball hit by Pete Alonso that I honestly don't think has landed yet. If you, if you haven't gotten to see that home run, just take a look. Look that up somewhere. I mean, I'm sure it's up there. A moonshot. Down the down the um, you know down the left field line that went over the foul pole. Absolutely remarkable. And Carlos Gomez finish finishing it off with his dramatic, exciting three run homer, and watching him run around the bases. There was a, all of a sudden, it seemed like a new excitement, like a new excitement in the air. It's tough, this is why it's always, it's tough to take a few games seriously in a baseball season. It really is. That's why they play at 162 games on the schedule. It's tough to take two or three weeks that seriously. Look at Boston. Look at the Boston Red Sox. You know, good teams, you know, after a while, it's, it's called consistency. Eventually, you're going to see team the good teams rise up and the pretenders kind of start to fall off. You find out who the contenders and pretenders are, I'm going to say after the All-Star break. When you get closer to August, the last two months of the season, that's the stretch run. That's when you know. Until then, as observers, as fans, as analysts, we need to just sit back and enjoy the ups and downs of the season. There are going to